I never set out to win a Nobel Prize. I only set out to do everything to the best of my ability, and I never put in a second-rate effort. With such resilience in his work, Sir Harold Croto finally became the co-winner of the 1996 Nobel Prize for Chemistry. This professor from Florida State University was awarded the Nobel Prize for his discovery of the carbon compounds called fullerenes. This discovery opened up an entirely new branch of chemistry with consequences in such diverse areas as astrochemistry, superconductivity, and materials chemistry physics. Professor Sohara Kroto presently carries out research in nanoscience and nanotechnology and has served as president of the Royal Society of Chemistry. He has also set up the Vega Science Trust, a UK educational charity and TV science channel accessed by over 165 countries, of which many programs have been broadcast on BBC aiming to improve knowledge and raise awareness of scientific achievements. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Talk Vietnam for an exclusive interview with 1996 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry, Professor Sir Harold Croto from Florida State University. It's our great honor and privilege to have him here with us. Today, we'll learn more about the discovery that won him the Nobel Prize and his unique philosophy of science. Professor Sir Harold Croto, nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you so much for being here with us. Oh, did I have a choice? <laughs> well, how are you today? Oh, I'm still alive, <laughs> more or less, um, but uh, interesting, and uh, my first visit to Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, so far it's been very interesting and uh, enjoyable. That's great. What was your first impression upon arrival? Well, I haven't had a long, uh, lot, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, one f first impression is that there's quite a lot of building going on, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and also that uh, a lot of the houses that I saw were well constructed. And, uh, <laughs> They, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a way that many uh, buildings in the USA, they're made of wood and will fall yeah. down in a, in a hurricane. But uh, I, I've not been really here long enough to form an impression. Uh, I only know of Vietnam from outside and, yeah. uh, and uh, from films and things of this nature. Um, but uh, I have a good impression of Vietnam, partly because I see something deep in the culture that has allowed it to uh, make friends with America mm -hmm. uh, after the difficulties uh, of about 50 years ago. Yeah. And I think um, Vietnam has a, uh, can, uh, is a lesson to other countries in the world um, on how they can overcome the, those sorts of difficulties. Um, mm -hmm. And so I. I've always felt there's something special about the country that mm -hmm. can do that. And what made you decide to donate your valuable time and energy to the fourth ASEAN event series, Bridges Dialogues Towards a Culture of Peace? Uh, well, I think I've been, in, uh, I, I'm invited somewhere every day, and that was one that interested me, but it took a long time mm -hmm. to come and to, make, uh, to be able to come because I have a long backlog of, um, of requests. Um, but, I mean, peace is obviously something that interests uh, me. Uh, my view is that I'm going around the world and talking to young people um, and trying, trying to inspire them to do science and think about uh, thinking for themselves, but also uh, developing a humanitarian attitude. And hopefully, if they get into positions of responsibility, change the direction of politicians uh, towards working together to solve their problems rather than sending young people to go and mm -hmm. kill each other. Yeah. And um, how about your schoolboy times? You were still a schoolboy when you developed what you call an unhealthy interest in chemistry. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, a, a bit of a joke, but yes, um, um, yeah, I, but when I was, a, was young, I, I was good at making things with my hands. Um, and my father, who's a refugee, really um, tr uh, ensured that I had things to, to make. And you mentioned your father, so did your parents have a great influence on facilitating your interest in natural science? Well, my father was an en engineer and um, he did influence me because he um, he gave me an electric train set and I had Meccano and things. He, he certainly, certainly, these were things that were given to me. And I also had a big room 
it was an old house mm -hmm. it was really in the slums but I had my own world in there where I had a train set and made things out of a, a set called Meccano mm -hmm. and things of this nature so he definitely encouraged the practical side of things and um, less so on the art side because that but I think I even seem today think I'm better at that <laughs> although I've had much less practice at it than I I, I really would have liked to have done more of that than I've been able to do. Were you the best in your class as no, a student? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I was good, but I was never the best in the class. And it depends what subject. So I was, uh, I was up in the top quarter or third mm -hmm. in general. Um, the only thing I was best at as a young child was geography. I mean, I, oh. I, that was that was the subject, and I, 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 I remember coming top in geography and deciding, oh, I can be top in something, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll focus on geography, and I think yeah. that's uh, part of it, but um, I, didn't, I don't like competition. I don't mm. think it's healthy. I think the thing top of the form is not a good thing because there are kids at the bottom. Uh, we've, got to, we've got to have a totally different attitude to schoolwork we somehow have to encourage people, the young kid who's, who's you know, bottom of the form. What sort mm -hmm. of incentive is that? Yeah. So there's something at really at a very fundamental level not right in the way that we imprint competition.
Tongo everywhere. Yeah. <coughs> so um, I now give presentations via the internet, and I do this maybe uh, several times mm -hmm. a year to India. And I've done this now to Iceland, to Germany, to in Australia, to 2,000 kids, so I can mm -hmm. reach people that I can't go any other way. Um, but I, I'm hoping t that um, it'd be a two-way thing, that uh, there will be creation of educational material in, uh, in Vietnamese mm -hmm. here, yeah. and contribution to this uh, global initiative. Mm -hmm. In a developing country like Vietnam, how do you think we should invest in science, including chemistry? What strategies or approaches should Vietnam consider for the future? Well, not to think about uh, com competition, but uh, to create a, an environment in your universities where young people, young scientists can do what they want to do rather than what people in authority think they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Because you can't be creative doing something yeah. you're not passionate about. And if you look at um, the, the big breakthrough, almost all the big scientific breakthroughs have been done by individuals uh, not doing strategic mm -hmm. science, but uh, they're doing fundamental science of things that they're interested in. <laughs>